today's local and national news from Thailand via the fabulous Patia Media Group. And if you'd be kind enough to like and subscribe, here's a tip for you to get the very latest news from us every day. When you subscribe, click on the button that says All. And then every day you'll get an update straight from us. A police colonel, one of 25 who attended the party in Nakhon Patom last week when a police officer was killed and another maimed after falling out with the local headsman, has taken his own life, according to Thai media last night. In the saga which we've reported on over the past few days, the headman wanted a favour. The officers refused. That led to them being shot. The gunman himself being shot days later in a gunfight with authorities. The headman in jail and 23 officers who also attended the party under suspicion of involvement. It's believed that the colonel shot himself and others have told that it was he who invited the two colleagues to the party and introduced them to the discussion which became heated. The joint sitting of the House of Representatives and Senate sat yesterday in the first day of discussion and debate on the policy plan published by the new coalition government. The 10,000 baht digital wallet programme was high on the list, alongside undetailed plans of debt relief for farmers and individuals, increasing tourism revenue and the planned amendment of the Constitution. Both the government and opposition will enjoy equal debating time this week on the issues and already move forward as claimed that the plans that are listed lack time frame, a schedule to show how they will work and what will be done to achieve them. Missing from the list so far is the election promise of 25,000 baht a month for university graduates, an issue that could have seen many, if not all, unable to find work as they leave university. Although armed with papers, they would have little in the way of any experience. For those already in employment, the promise was seen as a good one and would also have seen teachers getting a much-needed raise in salary. Kuhn Sreta sees short, medium and long-term plans essential to economic growth and wants to amend the military programmes in a move towards a voluntary armed force, with the inference that it's too top-heavy with senior-ranking officers, and that that too needs to be addressed. Efficient tax collection is also on the agenda. Complaints are increasing from food delivery drivers around the country, who, during the pandemic, earned good money, but, according to them, have seen their rates cut per delivery, along with the downturn in the number of deliveries available. It seems that the companies too are struggling, losing fortunes annually, despite in some cases their share of the food costs being high already. Fees paid to the drivers now are at around 38 baht per delivery, and from that comes the cost of fuel too. A good reason perhaps to tip your delivery man. What does the future hold? Who knows? But as an example of the bottom line, Lineman is said to have reported a 2.7 billion baht loss last year, and the others are pretty much in the same boat. With many asking where the money is coming from for the promised 10,000 baht per adult spending programme due from the government early next year, bean counters in Bangkok have noted that millions of Thais working away from home are unlikely to be able to claim. With close to 3 million non-resident workers in the capital alone, they may offer a saving to the state plan as their money, once allocated, can only be spent within a short distance of their registered homes. Cities such as Pattaya saw proof positive during the Covid era that the majority of Thais living in the region are not registered here either. With property worth an estimated 585 million baht seized, four Chinesemen, along with their Lao partner, have been arrested on charges of involvement in a massive cryptocurrency scam that's estimated to have netted close to 3 billion baht. Over 3,000 people have registered complaints against BCH Global Limited website showing that they were duped into buying into gold and crypto, only to find that they've been hoodwinked. Charged with money laundering, fraud and transnational crime, they're being held by police without bail. Meanwhile at home, and preparation is underway along the promenade for the Friday and Saturday Music on the Beach event which will see one side of the frontage road closed as the two-day festival hosts marching bands from various schools around the country, promising to be well worth seeing and, of course, hearing. The events run from three to six in the evening on both days. Two inebriated Korean tourists endured payback this week after throwing beer at a group of local women. Stumbling along Soy 12, they infuriated their targets so much that the ladies gave them a pasting. Police and medics found them out for the count, more due to alcohol than the face lapping, but in the middle of the road. And hissing Sid wasn't innocent this week in Soy Bacow, as a three-metre-long python has been blamed for a power outage 
that saw the area go dark for hours early yesterday morning. A minor fire burned from overhead cables and transformers and that was extinguished. Then electricians sent in to repair, only to discover the snake with minor wounds and burns. A local claims to have seen it climb the telegraph pole and slither along the cables. Animal vets plan to release it back into a less wild area at a later date. And with the current winds expected to continue, the Met Office promises highs today of 32 but dropping down to 26 and the real feel of around 36 today. Local and national news today from Fabulous 103 FM and Fabulous Patia Media Group. And to get a notification every time we release another bulletin or programme, like and subscribe to our channel, Fabulous Patia Media Group, by using the link below.